If we're studying the past, we need to think about the range of sources that we can make use of to deal with the often fragmentary nature of historical evidence. And that will enable us to interpret history from numerous different perspectives. Historians have often relied wholly on textual accounts, when other kinds of material may well be available, for example, visual images. This neglect of visual images has been referred to as a condescension towards images. Even when they have been used, it's often been, often been merely to illustrate conclusions that have already been reached through prior textual analysis. The images cited therefore bring no new insights to the research. But historical interpretation requires us to think critically about the diverse ways that social groups and societies thought about and made sense of their world. And one of the means by which they've done so in the past is through images. Some historians have immersed themselves in the analysis of images. And there are some very good examples of this with, for example, interpretation of ancient Egyptian tomb paintings, medieval religious art, or 19th century political prints. Images from the past can include paintings, drawings, engravings, photographs, and cartoons, as well as many other kinds of images. As Peter Burke suggests, these are sources that allow us to imagine the past much more vividly. But as he also notes, images can be mute witnesses. So it's more difficult to translate their testimony into words than it is with more explicit textual material. As with textual sources, understanding the context in which they were produced and who they were produced for is crucial. As an illustration of this, I'm going to examine briefly one particular image that I have used in my research. This image is a sketch of a prison riot that was drawn by a prisoner, a convict, imprisoned in Dartmoor prison, and is drawn on prison toilet paper. In 1932, there was a major prison riot in Dartmoor prison in Devon during which the inmates took control of the prison for about an hour and a half. No one was killed during the riot, but there were some serious injuries. The most serious being the shooting of a prisoner who then fell from the roof of a building and suffered paralysis. Inmates set fire to the central buildings of the prison and there was extensive property damage. The image that I'm going to discuss only came to light and therefore became a part of history because I chose to ask some specific questions and, um, and approached my research with specific purposes. So I had the specific purpose to research the first academic study of the Dartmoor riot. Also, I was interested in gaining a view of the riot from the perspective of those who were involved in it. And also, I wanted to find out what information I could obtain from descendants of the prison officers who were present in the Dartmoor prison riot of 1932. I therefore interviewed the daughter of one of those prison officers, and following the interview, she gave me access to this sketch, which had been handed down to her by her father. Unfortunately, little information about the sketch has survived. We know it was drawn by a prisoner shortly after the riot, and it was given to her father because he's named in it. He was Officer Trask. There is no written historical account or explanation of the meaning of this sketch. That job has been left to us, and we do that from the perspective of our own social and cultural contexts. This image gives us a form of independent testimony. The content is more considered than the kind of snapshot that we would get from a photograph. And as it is drawn by an inmate, it offers a particular perspective, that of a prisoner. The sketch is a comic rendition of the midst of the riot. The convict prisoner who drew it portrays prison officers as afraid and as ridiculous figures. The convicts are all Al Capone look-alikes, 
and the violence and injury is caricatured, and so evading the issue of harm. The caricatures of prisoners could have been taken from popular gangster movies of the time, like uh, Public Enemy, which came out in 1931, Scarface, which came out in the same year, or the prototype American prison film, The Big House, which came out in 1930. And in that film, there were scenes of prison rioting. In the sketch, it is a prison officer who falls from the tall building, not an inmate, as was actually the case. Yet Officer Trask is named in the speech balloon, no doubt because while defending the prison perimeter, he may actually have been the officer who shot that prisoner that I've just mentioned off a rooftop from the prison. Prison officers and inmates are firmly on opposing sides. There's no blurring of roles, no blurring of loyalties, which conflicts with actually other evidence about the riot. The comic prison, it seems, has been taken over not by dangerous criminals, as portrayed in the prison authority, by the prison authorities and the media, but by a community of revelers, caricatured gangsters wielding only cartoon weapons. Were there a large number of these criminals in the prison at the time? Well, no. But there is evidence to suggest that these kinds of offenders, who were sometimes called gangsters in the press of the time, were influential in the prison inmate hierarchy and during the riot. So the cartoon may well be reflecting the internal inmate hierarchy. Intriguingly, the sketch could also be interpreted as ridiculing the outcome of the official in investigation, which placed the blame for the riot firmly on a small number of those modern criminals, gangsters and motor bandits in the prison that were getting a lot of publicity uh, and, and attracted a lot of social concern at the time. There's much more that could be said about this one image, but already from what I've said, it's clear that images such as this one can be extremely valuable to historical research and can offer real immediacy and vividness to our understanding of the past. <laughs>